If I stomp too heavy, I can actually get the nickel to fall. So it's more of the ground shaking itself that would actually knock the nickel over. So for a passive and an active, the way it's tuned to 52 hertz at a perfect equilibrium tends to work really well. It actually makes it function as if it's actually a force canceled sub because at the point where it would actually start really producing really low SPL with lots of high impact that would cause wobble because it's actually being used on the stands I originally used on my LS50s but it's not used correctly because these stands are meant to actually stabilize forward and backward and are actually less stable side to side so the subwoofer if it had a driver only on one side would wobble the hell out of this thing just like a speaker placed sideways on it would but yeah they did a pretty damn good job it literally behaves as if it's force cancelling which I thought pretty impressive yeah, I'll change it in a piece step is more likely to drop the dime than the subwoofer playing at any volume. beginning of experimentation with passive radiators that the Q series now uses and you kind of see how that evolved into how the blade now uses dual couple canceled active drivers but they had an incarnation that was actually tuned using a passive and a active driver that actually worked pretty much just as well this same configuration is actually now being sold as the T2 slimline sub, which is actually a square box and it only has the active driver and no longer has the passive driver on the other side. So it doesn't have the force canceling, kind of pseudo force canceling, but effectively it really does work. So I would call it force canceling for the purposes of you know day to day use because it actually liberates you enough to place it on something that would otherwise rattle to all hell. Like obviously a Velodyne 10 inch would not do 
too well understand this flimsy especially well it's not flimsy forward and backwards but side by side it's not really that stable but yeah for a sub that still continues to test to live the test of time by being still in production just in a different form factor a cheaper form factor actually just being that it's a square box the drivers on it are really solid I feel the rumble of the floor a lot more than the sub itself feels, which is interesting. Like I can feel the rumble through my feet, but the sub itself actually feels like it's barely moving. Well, see, <laughs> that's how little of a tap it takes to drop the dime. Well, yeah, it's pretty neat. That would be the HTB too, and. For anyone who's looking for the T2 or anything like that, this would be definitely something that you would want to look into. It probably has the most musical, tightest, most kind of punchy and melodic sound where the range matters, which is between you know 40 and 80 or so. It goes all the way up to like 250 hertz from what I believe. So it doesn't go down to the quaking. 20 hertz that you'd imagine you need for movies or really really low frequency stuff like you know hip hop or something. But if you want like really agile, lively bass, these things are like bass engines. That easy. Ha! Yeah. Anyway, thanks.